Welcome to the December 13th uh, Planning Commission meeting. Uh, let it be known that uh, Council per Commissioner Pierce, uh, Merriman, myself, Freeman, and Jove are in attendance. Uh, Wassinger, uh, Mann, and Was uh, Walker Weiss are absent. Uh, Start the meeting off with the approval of the minutes of November 22nd, regular business meeting. I make a motion that we approve the minutes of the 22nd of November. I second it. Motion is made and you uh, second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. First 15 minutes is now open to uh, uh, public comment. Uh, the Planning Commission will receive public comment for any item otherwise not on the agenda for tonight for the first 15 minutes. Anybody in the neighbor, uh, audience wish to speak on any item? Not in the agenda? I'll close that part of it. And I'll open up the public uh, meeting for our first item. And I'm going to turn this over to uh, Mr. Powers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Freeman. As, as uh, you know, this is the Marin Woods Plan Residential Development and Preliminary Plat. It's a continuation of your public hearing from September 27th. Uh, and before we get started with this item this evening, it's necessary for staff to run the commission through the Appearance of Fairness uh, colloquy again. As a reminder, what these are, are questions to help determine whether or not the Planning Commission, uh, any member of the commission, has a, a conflict of interest that could create a problem for your participation in this proceeding. So I'll ask the questions one at a time and then just each of you can just feel free to answer. Uh, <clears throat> we'll go start with Ms. Merriman and work our way around. Uh, question number one, does any member of this commission have knowledge of or conducted business with either the opponents or proponents of this particular plat? No. 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 Yes. Yes. Would you like to add something to the record, please? Sure. Um, on the uh, 5th and 10th of July uh, 2013, I met with Richard Marin and on the 10th also with uh, George Marin to discuss uh, them selling their family property on Swantown Road. On the uh, 5th of July, um, I sent uh, emails back and forth between me and Richard Marin on the 7th and 8th between myself and George Marin. On the 8th of July, I visited the property and had a face-to-face -face conversation with George Marin. Uh, on the 11th and 12th, 16th, 18th, 25th, and 26th, and 10th and 11th, I had emails between myself and uh, Richard and George Marin. And I've had no communications with any of the family members since the 11th of September 2013. Thank you so much. Uh, question number two, does any member of this, this commission have a pecuniary or non-pecuniary interest in the outcome of this proceeding? No. 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 Number three, does any member of this commission know whether or not their employer has a financial interest in the property or area which will be impacted by the decision in this proceeding? No. 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 We're on a roll. Number four, does any member of this commission live or own property within 300 feet of the area which will be impacted by the decision in this proceeding? No. 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 Does any member of this commission have any special knowledge about the substance of the merits of this proceeding which would or could cause the commissioner to prejudge the outcome of this proceeding? No. 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 Number six, is there any member of this commission who believes that, that he or she cannot sit and hear this matter fairly and impartially as to the respective positions of the proponents and the opponents of this proceeding? No. 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 Number seven, has any member of the commission had any ex parte contacts concerning this matter? No. 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 And finally, question number eight. Is there any member of the audience who believes because of the appearance of fairness doctrine that any member of the commission should be disqualified? I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Freeman. Okay, we have a presentation. We do, thank you. I'm Ray Lindenberg, Associate Planner for the City of Oak Harbor. Um, I am not going to go through the entire packet of information again. I think everybody's going to be happy about that. 
Um, I am going to do a brief presentation and uh, kind of go through what's changed with the project since we last looked at it. If you have any questions, stop me and we'll, we'll go through that. Um, just as a bit of background, this is a continued item from the September 27th, 2016 meeting. Uh, you have all that information that was in there. Um, there was a waiver application that was included in that packet uh, that had uh, a lack of a street connection to Swantown Road or Swantown Avenue. Um, we worked with the applicant to resolve that issue because that was what our sticking point was as far as making a recommendation for approval. The applicant has provided us a new application that does include that street uh, connection. And so we're going to move forward with that. Um, again, the purpose of this uh, meeting is to go through and review the preliminary plat PRD and subdivision waiver applications for this subdivision. Um, this is a review process type four, quasi-judicial proceeding, and you will make a recommendation to go to the city council for approval of the plat and the PRD. So just to give you a brief uh, recap on the project itself, it's now 46 lots, which is up from 43. There were some minor changes when they, they included the road connection in there. Got a couple more lots included further up the hill, and we'll talk about those in just a minute. Um, the applicant is requesting a preliminary plat PRD and subdivision waiver, and um, there are public residential streets that are going to serve the development two from the existing hubs or stubs from the Hillcrest Village subdivision, and then that new connection to Southwest Swantown Avenue. Again, that's the uh, the site, that wooded area uh, in between the homes there. These are the applications under review. I'm not going to read them all, but we're familiar with them. It's all the preliminary plat and PRD and all the associated applications. Um, just kind of talking about the preliminary plat there. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail there, but uh, just as a reminder, we're going to give a recommendation to the, to the city council for approval on that. Um, this is the old uh, application, the old uh, layout, and then this is the new layout. And as you can see, what's changed there is there is a new street uh, going out to Swantown Road. The uh, north is to the right there. And then there are a couple new lots, three new lots included uh, in the subdivision. What they did is they, on that row on the bottom there, is they compressed the lots down a little bit and added a new lot. And then in the open space tract A there, they added two new lots to the sides there uh, to increase the total number to 46. So when we go through the PRD review um, or the subdivision review, we determine if uh, appropriate provisions have been made for this list of items there. Um, staff feels that the appropriate provisions have been made in that situation. Um, is the public ser interest served by the platting of the subdivision? Staff feels that yes, that is the case. Um, we have a preliminary planned residential development and there are standards for that as well. And um, we've gone through, staff has gone through to ensure that uh, this application meets the standards that are set forth in the Oak Harbor Municipal Code. This is the, uh, the PRD map. And again, you see the, the new street connection there. You see that there's uh, open space tracts and native vegetation uh, included. All those are parts of the standards of the PRD. Also as part of the PRD, um, they're required to include uh, house plans and those house plans are shown here. Um, those are the five uh, floor plans that will be available on, this, on the site or in the subdivision itself. Um, the PRD approval will require that development shall conform in all major respects with the submitted plans, plan sets. So what we have is a, a set of plans and a set of uh, criteria here and they, they meet those and we will make sure that those are included as part of conditions and those conditions are available in your staff report. Um, they're based on the Oak Harbor Municipal Code 1931-170. Now there's two subdivision waivers uh, for, uh, two administrative waivers. And this is a, a minor change from the previous application. Um, those administrative waivers are generally kind of more minor type issues and they are um, reviewed by the director and approved by the director. So this is not a decision that you're making, but we're just including that information in there so you're aware of what's going on. Um, in this case, they're re requesting two waivers for narrowing of, of street uh, cross sections in two locations. Previously, it was just in one location. Um, when they included that street connection down to Swantown Avenue, um, part of that actual section of road is also going to be narrower. Um, staff has concurred with this application. We feel it's appropriate and it meets all the standards. There's also a, a subdivision waiver to request uh, variance from the curve geometry requirements. Again, uh, planning and engineering staff support that approval. And then there is a uh, maximum street grade uh, that will be exceeded for a small portion of uh, a street there. 
and planning and engineering staff also support that one. Um, one of the applicants, applications is also a landscape plan. Um, staff has reviewed the landscape plan and determined it meets the standards. Um, that's the landscape plan. Again, it's changed a little bit. There is a new open space tract along the new roadway uh, on the left-hand side there that will be included as part of that landscaping. Um, again, they meet all the standards for open space, native vegetation, and all that that is in the, the PRD code. Land clearing plan, they have one. Transportation con concurrency, they meet that. Um, that's something that engineering reviews. Uh, SEPA, they've gone through. So what we have is a review process summary. Um, staff has reviewed the application. We've determined that it meets the standards that we have set forth in the Oak Harbor Municipal Code. So we're bringing it to you. This is the hearing and the recommendation, and then it will go to the city council for a closed record review, and they will make the determination to approve the, uh, the plat and the PRD. So our recommendation is to uh, conduct the public hearing, um, and second, to forward a recommendation to the city council for approval of this preliminary plat, PRD, subdivision waivers, and associated permits for the Marin Woods project, and adopt the findings of fact this evening. So that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. My comment uh, on this is that we've come a long ways from the last meeting. Certainly have. I'm, I want to thank the applicant and, and your, you and, and staff, you know, for uh, the hard work you've done to, to bring this thing forward. You know, it's, it's answered a lot of questions. It's resolved a lot of issues that I had uh, previously. So. I have a few questions, if I can. Um, before we get into those questions, it may be appropriate to ask if the uh, applicant would like to speak to the to the matter before we start the Planning Commission questions. Please. Uh, John Bissell with Harmson. Um, and uh, we really don't have a lot to say except that uh, we concur with the staff's presentation and uh, we've reviewed the findings of fact and the proposed conditions and have no objections to any of those conditions. So uh, more than anything, we're here to answer questions if you have any. Okay. Um, a couple of questions. That uh, intersection that's going to be down at the corner of uh, Swantown and uh, I guess it's called Upper Marin Drive. Um, that's now going to be a two lane with no um, areas for parking on either side. Is that going to be a, a challenge for um, moving vans to make that turn off of Swantown into the community? Um, uh, engineering staff reviewed that and they did not indicate that there was going to be an issue there. So I'm assuming that they've reviewed the, the turn radius, radi radii um, and all of the the kind of geometric issues that go along with that. So I'm going to assume that since they reviewed it, that that is the case. They're not here to answer that specifically tonight, but uh, they have reviewed the project uh, in its entirety, so. So that side of Swantown um, does not have a parking lane like the opposite side of Swantown does? Um, and there's no dedicated turn lanes or anything coming in off of Swantown, I assume. Um, there is, I believe it is widened slightly um, through dedication, but no dedicated turn lane now. Okay. Um, the uh, section of, is that Vallejo Vista that runs past the green belt or green park area um, where it's been narrowed down? Um, that seems to me like a likely place where people are gonna wanna park when they go take their kids to the, um, playground that's up there, is that a concern at all? You know, that was another thing that we reviewed and engineering looked at. Um, it is the intent of a, of a park like that that's for the use of the people in the neighborhood and, and kind of the expectation that those folks will walk there. And that's why there is a walking path that goes in from Upper Marin Drive on the other side to allow people to access, uh, you know, without going around the block essentially. So we feel that that, uh, it might be a concern, but um, I believe that there is a requirement that there'll be no parking signs there. Um, I know fire looked at that as well. Uh, as I said, uh, engineering staff reviewed it and they're, they're putting their support behind that, that variance, that waiver. So I think there's, there's not a concern there um, from that standpoint. And it looks like that's a hard curb as opposed to a rolled curb along that I section? I so, yeah. Um, and the last question I have is just a matter of curiosity more than anything else. Um, 
is there going to be any attempt to maintain any of the mature trees that are there? Um, the the problem that we've found with maintaining strips of trees, narrow strips of trees, is they're susceptible to be blown down in the storms. Um, so what we have allowed in the past, uh, and one of the conditions on here is to consult with a professional arborist to determine the best course of action there. But what we've determined in the past is when you have the narrow strip of trees, sometimes it's better just to take down all the trees and replace with new native vegetation. And by taking down all the trees, we're not suggesting just stripping it bare, but taking out the larger trees that are a threat or a possibility of falling down, um, leaving maybe smaller trees that can grow strong uh, and be able to, to hold up against winds and, and things like that. So um, there is a professional arborist uh, I think involved in, in the applicant's team uh, so they can consult with him and determine if that's the, the proper course to go, so. Thank you. Question? I, I had a, a question regarding uh, the document where it, it states that the uh, CCNRs will be established at a later date. Uh, one of my concerns uh, on this is there's a, a large amount of infrastructure uh, regarding the retention pond, detention pond itself, and also the uh, uh, the storm uh, filtration system. It'll go over to the golf course. On top of that, uh, the, the the playground equipment, the park area, and those walkways. And I just want to make sure you know make sure that the property owners is only going to be 46. And my question to the applicant would be, how are they going to ensure uh, that these costs are covered or that these properties are being maintained without large you know, in cost in the future? The reason why I'm asking that is I live in Fairway Point, and we lose a lot of trees each year to the tune where it's like three, dollars $4,000 a year we have to have the filtration system inspected by the city on an annual basis, of which we have three. And there's a considerable cost to have these things cleaned. And how will this just be paid for? Okay. Uh, the CCRs exist in draft form, probably about 100 pages at this point. Mm -hmm includes the, 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 the maintenance for criteria for the biofiltration system and, and those annual maintenance inspections are already sort of written into that, that code. They will be adopted later, but we've got all of those things in, in draft form. Um, the, the annual cost associated is, you know, this is the number we're gonna have to figure out in, in, the, right. in the course of the thing, but, but I, I don't wanna leave the impression we haven't done anything on CECR. We're, we're about 80 pages in on drafts. Okay. Okay, well, that, and that'll be uh, approved by the uh, city staff, is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Freeman. We, we uh, routinely take care of that detail part um, between the staff and the applicant. Um, and we get them um, to coincide with the uh, uh, approval of the final plat. Well, again, I just want to make the comment from my, my standpoint, we've come a long ways on this development from our September meeting. And I applaud, you know, the applicant in the city for working diligently to, you know, address the concerns that, that we had and expressed during the last meeting. Uh, I, I visited the property again after receiving the new packet, and one of my questions last time was the turning races for the moving bands, and I kind of did a walk around through or a drive around through as well, and there are two other streets that will be accessed into this development that would accommodate the moving vans, their turning radiuses and all that. Uh, parking, you know, parking could be next to nothing and it, you know, depending on the holidays, it could be extreme, but I don't see anything that would, you know, uh, sway me, you know, you know, to go against uh, the street width or anything like that. I was very, very pleased uh, to see the changes and just want to say thank you. With that, I'll close the public hearing. Any questions from the from the from the audience? Yeah, I'll entertain a motion. 
I move that we recommend to the City Council approval of the above listed preliminary plat, the preliminary PRD, subdivision waivers, and the associated permits for the Marin Woods project. Do I roll in the adopt findings also? Um, easier to do them one at a time, please. Okay. We have a, a motion to approve. I second. We have a, a motion to approve and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 I move that we adopt the findings of fact and conditions of approval for the Marin Woods project plat. I second. We have a mo motion to approve and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All opposed. Seeing none. Recommendation approved. That's it. That's a wrap, folks. That's all we had for you this evening. Okay.